welcome to That Business Show 2.0. I'm your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. New episodes each weekday morning, 9 a.m. on thatbusinessnetwork.com. And don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes and also all high-definition videos available on our YouTube channel. Simply go to that youtubechannel.com. Today, our guest is Bethany Nonami. She is a technology and growth sensei with Marley Nonami. And we're going to be talking about uh, different ways to grow your business through online presence, social media, and much more. So Bethany, welcome to the program today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So you call yourself a sensei. I remember those days in, in karate and stuff. Are you a karateka by chance? No, I'm not. In my mind, I'm a super cool ninja. So I just... Because we have our own company. We I wish we had more title. ninjas in this world. Right? I know. Ninja's a cool uh, cool they? thing, isn't it? They are. Yes. I, 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 was, I took karate classes when I was younger, and I, I, I pretended I was a little ninja. <laughs> I even wore a cape, and had, I had some of the ninja weapons. I had nunchucks, too. Uh, those are the best. <laughs> I will are. never give my kid nunchucks, ever. So tell us, how are you a technology and growth sensei then in business? So I started in technology 20-plus years ago, and... Business has changed, and it's almost something that you can't do business without technology. And my journey has just kind of transformed into websites, software, and now tying everything back to revenue. So if it doesn't help us grow, there's so many things we can do that waste time. But we read a blog or we look at somebody else that's wildly successful and say, that's going to work for me. And we spend months on it and we get nothing. You know, technology has really crowded the waters, in my opinion. It's made everybody, you know, an expert on something. It's made everybody out there to make you feel like you there's just so much competition out there. It's, it's almost overwhelming at times. It is. It is. And, and you have too many choices. So if you don't really know what your problem is, you could solve it many different ways and still not come... You know, I know an area that I struggle with is just like with social media, you know, I, I'm constantly trying to market the show and I don't know if I should be spending more time on this site or on that site. I don't even know if anybody even cares. Am I right. posting too much? Right. I, I don't know what to do. Right. Well, it's hard because, you know, we see four to 10,000 ads a day, which was what we would see 30 years ago in a month. Mm -hmm. So the distraction that we have as human beings have, have gone from 30 seconds, which is how we had commercial spots that were 30 seconds, now to three to five seconds. So anything you do, whether it's posting on Facebook, whether it's sending an email, whether it's your website, you have three to five seconds before someone's decided if they're going to read, if they're going to listen, or if they're just going to continue to go on their feed. Have you found that magic formula yet of what gets people to respond on social media? But, you know, years ago, is make sure you have a picture. Now it's make sure you have a video. But even then, it seems like everybody's doing it. Why anybody going to notice me? Well, it, it depends. So it, it's very platform specific. If you're on a visual platform like Instagram, something like that, even Facebook, visual stands out because there's so much in our feed. It's just muddled with junk. Yeah. But in three seconds, if you can say, what's in it for me? and I can read what's in it for me within three seconds, most times that will capture the attention of the right person. You know, see, I like to put a lot of detail into my post because I, I'm because that's how I am. I want to really know something, mm -hmm. but maybe that's where I'm getting some things wrong. Maybe I just need to put a line or two in there instead just, of like a paragraph. They're gonna skim. So if that image just has five to six words, that will cause them to click. Then they can read your detail. Yeah, then like they that. can see all the stuff. Yeah, and like I said, I've learned through the years that I think differently than everybody else. And I think it's been an impediment to me in business because I'm a detail-oriented person. Right. I'm somebody who wants to put a lot of work and a lot of effort into right. something. But it's not always the case with uh, today's technology. It's, it's just you're competing with a lot. It right is. now. It is, it is. And then and, and these social media platforms are making it even more difficult to even notice. I have a fan page. It's nearly 5,000 likes on it. I post something up there and it gets like 10 natural, you know, appearances on, on you know, my, on, on the pages out there. Right, and right. And I know it helps if people share and like it. That helps it and everything. Right. But, you know, it's, it's, it's like Facebook is making it even more difficult on us. Well, and, and keep in mind with Facebook, they're looking for social triggers. So they're looking for engagement. So if you post something and you have a really high engagement, then Facebook thinks that's more valuable to the experience of their other users. So they help you promote that more if it's higher engagement versus one like right. or one thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, and I've noticed that if I get a share or two and if I get – because I do these shows and I make show cards and we post them. And, and every now and then – actually, more than every now and then, I get a lot of the guests that they really will share them. But some will just ignore them. And the ones who just ignore them, don't do anything, they don't, nobody sees them. Right. But the guests who share a couple of times, next thing I know, it's will be a two or 3,000 people right. saw the post right. and everything. So it's all about getting people engaged into your post. Right. I talked to somebody one time that said, you know, and I kind of got the idea from the conversation that I was too worried about myself and my 
social media, meaning that I never shared other people's content. Mm. So I have so much content with the show, so many different guests. I'm constantly posting, you know, the shows, the shows, but I'm not sharing other people's articles and things like that. And she said, if you learn to do that more, that helps uh, the, the, the Facebook algorithm. Do you have any comment on just being more, you know, uh, you know, uh, evolved? So there are certain things that Facebook categorizes self-promotional. If you have value and you're giving value back to your listeners and your readers and everyone that knows you, then that's not really self-promotional because you're, you're adding value mm -hmm. to them. And sharing other people's content, if it's relevant and it helps them grow their business or it helps them validate a business idea, then absolutely. But it takes away from all the stuff you have going on that also adds value. Yeah, I know. I've, so it's I mean, kinda... I'm already creating so much content, and I've always been of the type of person that I want to be original. I want to be a creator. I don't want to copy somebody else's things. No. I don't want to just share other things. But right. apparently, you know, that helps uh, in, in Facebook if you share and you do more than just post about me, me, me. And it's not really me, me, me. It's just my show and my guests I'm putting right. out there. Right, right. So tell us a little bit more then about your background in business. How did you come to uh, get involved with Marley Nanami? So I started, I've always been a nerd back to when it was really never cool, but now it's a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I started with websites and doing website design. And 20 years ago, you could have a website, not even have good content, but get traffic. Right. Because you weren't competing with 3 million other pages. Now, it, it turned into, you can't just have a website, but you have to have valuable content and you have to have somebody do something. There's so many people that started a blog and never asked for emails. Yeah. So they might have thousands of people that follow them and love them yeah. and know and trust them, but they have no way to access them. And same thing, people will go to Facebook and put all their eggs in one basket. Well, what happens if Facebook changes the terms or conditions and you can no longer directly talk to those people? Right, and I see a lot of business owners who don't even build websites today. They they're, just use their, their social media. Which, right. I mean, it's understandable, but you know, you're right. You don't own that content. You don't. You have no control over that platform whatsoever. And email is a way. And So when I started focusing on conversions and getting people, when they get to the site, to do something, is that an email? Is that... Uh, getting a coupon? Is that sharing your content? Is that making a comment? Like, what do you want someone to do? And now it's really, we need that to turn into a number. We can measure everything. We don't have to guess. Mm -hmm. We don't have to know everything. We can validate so much with the data and the analytics and access to things we've never had access to. So the way we build our business and how we access people and what we say and what they do, we can see. I think that's a good point because uh, somebody else had once told me that too. It's like when you when you build a website and somebody comes to it, what is it that you want them to do? It should be obvious within the first few seconds, Absolutely. or else they're, your bounce rate's going to go you yeah. know, through the roof. They're just going to just going to leave. So, and, and you see these sites though, and they, they actually irritate me. The sites you go to, and all of a sudden this box pops up on the screen in front of you. Order my free 30 day trial and just put email here. I don't know if that's effective. I know it's, you know, it, it puts the, it puts it right in front of you. Right. But, you know, I, again, I've always been about providing a lot of content and a lot of information. But mm -hmm. I see a lot of these online marketers who are successful in just using these simple online marketing techniques to capture right. email and sell their products. Right. And honestly, what may work for them may not work for your people. Right. Your people may be readers. They may want to read everything on the page, but you don't have to guess. There's there's software programs that are completely free that do a heat map. So I can see a lot of people still read with their mouse. I can see exactly where they are on the page and where they leave. So at what point maybe they get bored or I said something that kind of rubbed them the wrong way and they're done mm -hmm. and they leave. So we don't even have to guess on the page what they do because we can see their behavior. Right. We can record everything. Now, I've always used uh, the Google Analytics tool for my website. Is that I think that's probably the industry standard, but are there other programs that you recommend to, to gauge your website's performance? So every single site should have Google Analytics turned on. Mm -hmm. You can't see anything. Google's tracking data, just like Facebook tracks data. Everybody is tracking everything, right. pretty much. But if you turn Google Analytics on, then you have visibility to what Google already sees. You can see where they're coming from, where they go, what pages they leave. But some of the free tools, Hotjar is free, H-O-T-J-A-R. And Hotjar will allow you to record screens. So if someone comes, mm -hmm. you'll see, are they on a desktop? Are they on a tablet? Are they on Windows? Are they on a phone? Mm -hmm. And you can see a heat map, literally, of your whole page. And you see hot areas where maybe they hovered their mouse. 
You see cold areas where they don't even do anything. So you can see areas on their page that they're looking. And maybe they're thinking that that picture clicks to something. See, I'm, I'm old school. I think well, I'm, I'm generally interested in what people do. So when I go to a website, uh, I, I study it. I click their links. I follow the pages. Mm -hmm. But everyone else is telling me, Jamie, they're only looking at above the fold main page. When you go to that, that home page, they're not clicking your links. They're not scrolling down unless you really capture their attention. Right. These days. So the whole purpose of everything above the fold is to compel them to stay and read mm -hmm. and scroll down. So above the fold, which is what they see initially before they have to scroll should be what's in it for me, what you do, and who you serve. Good information. Right there. Good information. We'll cover more about that when we come back from a break. Currently talking to Bethany Nonami with Marley and Nonami. Learn more at marleynonami.com. They also have a free growth assessment available on their website. Again, marleynonami.com. So check that out. If you're listening to That Business Show 2.0. I'm your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. That Business Show 2.0. I'm your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes the show business. Today, I'm talking with Bethany Nonami. She is with Marley Nonami. And learn more again, marleynonami.com. We're talking about how to get your business noticed and found online, which is very important. And technology is at the core of business today. And so, Bethany, you know, it's important that Google understands your website. Mm -hmm. And it's, it differs from the way websites were built years ago. And it seems like Google constantly is updating their algorithm. And what you need to know is constantly evolving. It what is. are some tips in the know? There's a couple things. Uh, keep in mind that your website should not be a one and done project. It should always be evolving. The way that we search has gotten better. So if we search for something 10 years ago, we might have said dry cleaner. Now we might say dry cleaner Newport Ritchie. We, we have become more intelligent with the way that we search. So Google is always changing. Google has always changed the expectations that they have for us. One thing you need to understand is that your site has to be mobile friendly. And that means if you look at it on your computer screen mm -hmm. and your monitor's this big, it also needs to be able to be seen on something this big, like a tablet or something this big, right. like a phone. And many times we have this beautiful site and it can't be seen on mobile. So Google will look at that and, and know that you're not keeping up with modern technology and they don't officially ding you, but they don't send traffic to you. Right. So you could have a website that looks amazing, but just the menu is gone when you see it on mobile. Yeah, and it's important. I just built a whole brand new website. I had an old uh, site at tampabayradio.com, and now it's thatbusinessnetwork.com. But my old site was designed just for desktop, right. and it didn't rank on mobile, and so I built this whole new site. And it's got like 400 pages on it now because I got so much content packed on there. Everything. <laughs> but after I built each page, I looked at it on a phone. Mm -hmm. And the key word here is make sure you're using responsive code anytime you're embedding something. Mm -hmm. YouTube videos, uh, there's a way yep. to make those responsive. I mm -hmm. learned all about that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's critical to getting good uh, ranking in, in Google. But even still with all that effort, Google still finds something wrong with it. Well, and the other <laughs> thing you have to realize is, is speed. So we don't have an attention span. That's very long at all. And people expect your site to load in two seconds. Right. If your site loads after three seconds, every second you lose 50%. Mm. So 100 people come to your site, three seconds, you're down to 50. Four seconds, you're down to 25. Within six seconds, you're down to 12 people. Wow. So Google looks at your speed and you can test it. There's tools. Google has a, a page speed test that you can do that's free and it will tell you exactly what to fix for desktop and for mobile. Yeah, one thing I learned uh, recently is make sure, when I first built the site, I wanted my images to be nice, high definition, high quality. Right. <laughs> you gotta resize those things down to mobile, make them you know, less right. definition. Right. That's a, that was a huge thing slowing down my site, so I had to go fix all these images. Well, and you, you probably saw somewhere that they said your photos need to be high definition, they need to be high resolution. Yeah. So you did what you needed to do at that moment, which has changed. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, there are things like that, that if it's not mobile friendly, if it doesn't load fast, if you don't have the right meta tags, SEO. So SEO is search engine yes. optimization. If you are a dog trainer, 
trying to rank on that word is going to be nearly impossible because there are sites that are 20 years old that have dog training. That's a question I, I, I like to ask a lot too is, you know, if you are a dog trainer, obviously you're not going to rank for that word dog trainer in the beginning. Right. It's sort of, I, I, I equate it to like, you're not going to fight the heavyweight champ before you fight all these undercard fighters. Right. So how do you know what words to start to compete for yeah. to work your way up to dog trainer? So think of it in the terms of the questions that people are asking. So if you have a dog and the dog constantly barks when you leave, a question you might ask is, why is my dog barking when I leave? And somebody would type that into a search engine. That's a question they have. Um, and you, as a dog trainer, they might not be ready to hire a dog trainer. They're not looking for a dog trainer. They're trying to answer this question and solve just this very isolated problem. Keep my dog quiet while I go to work. Now, as a dog trainer, you might say, your dog has separation anxiety. Maybe it's a puppy. Maybe he's bored out of his mind. There's all these things that happen that if I answer that question for you, and I give you insight, and I save you time from having to look at five other websites to get the right answer, then I'm starting to establish myself as an expert, as a person that someone can trust when it comes to dog advice, when it right. comes to dog training. So think of the problems that you solve or the questions that people are searching for. And a great way to do it is to, you can type best and then insert your product or service, dog trainer, mm -hmm. and the word for, in a Google search term, and it'll start to fill and auto-populate terms for you. Best dog trainers for puppies. Best dog trainers for oh, Pomeranians. Good tip. Best dog trainers for whatever. So you don't even have to know. You don't have to guess. You can, uh, Google has a tool in AdWords called Keyword Planner. It's free to use. You have to set up an AdWords account and pretend like you're going to advertise, but you don't. Um, but what you can do is you can search for keyword terms related to dog training, uh, separation anxiety for pets. Right. Because I might not know that the answer is separation anxiety. I just know I have a problem. So think in terms of what questions people are asking, um, what solutions they're trying to find to smaller problems. So instead of trying to compete for that one key phrase that defines your business, right. compete on a question, for instance, mm -hmm. and then that'll start to, again, build up your rank. That's an yep. excellent, excellent tip uh, right there for, uh, for growing your SEO. What about the other search engine out there, Bing? I know there's a Bing Webmasters mm -hmm. tool. Is that something we need to be paying attention to also? In, Google has 90% of the search traffic around the world. If you use Google as your landmark and as the, the thing you try to accomplish and the thing you try to master, that will go through all the other search engines. So the other 10% are Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, all the other search engines are only 10% of the traffic. So Bing has a similar tool for determining keyword volume but a much smaller data set because they don't get as many searches. Now also I've been advised that you should constantly be changing your site. If it's a static site, then it's going to get less uh, you know, attention from Google. So should, how often should I be going in there and updating the homepage, uh, for instance? Is there a standard that is advised by Google? No, so 10 years ago, you could blog every week consistently and Google would care. Now, if you can give me insight into information and save me time or save me money and save me from going back and looking at other websites to get the right answer, then that's more important. So that's called cornerstone content. These are the pieces that when you've searched for something, you find the page and you're like, oh, that's good. You bookmark it, you share it, you send it, maybe you're going on a camping trip and you send it to everybody that's going camping with you because they need that information too. And is that really what Google is reading? You, when you bookmark something, it knows you bookmarked it, it knows you shared it. So that's coming into play more so than, hey, somebody else just dropped in here, but they Absolutely. left after 10 seconds. They're, it's called social triggers. So they're looking for engagement. They're looking for you shared it and it's being amplified. They're looking for other people that have backlinked to it. They're not just looking for good content. You can't, content is not king mm -hmm. anymore. You'd hear, oh, content is king and you need to be consistent. It doesn't even matter. You can have one really good piece and get thousands of visits a month 
to a piece that's just timeless. It seems like uh, older uh, days of the website, you could trick the system. You could use keyword stuffing and put all these, mm -mm. these irrelevant terms. It seems like Google's really making it to where, listen, you can't fake engagement on your site. And so mm -hmm. unless people are engaging, it's going to be a difficult uh, uh, growth. Right. And Google, all the search engines want you to get the right answer. They don't want you, and, and you can't keyword stuff anymore because you've probably seen, you're reading an article and it says, best 10 marketing tricks for entrepreneurs. You click it and it goes to like celebrity diet secrets. Yeah. And that's called clickbait. So anytime you keyword stuff and you're putting dog trainer, best dog trainer, I'm a dog trainer, find mm -hmm. a dog trainer, then it dings you because it doesn't know if that's clickbait and you're actually providing valuable content or if you're just trying to get people there to click yeah, and I've it's been, not relevant. I've been told that Google doesn't even pay attention to the keywords field anymore mm -hmm. inside of the uh, inside of the uh, uh, page uh, uh, metrics or meta tags and whatnot anymore. So so, so inside of the uh, the page, I guess, what are they looking at? The, the, the title and then mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, description page primarily? They look at a couple different things. They look at the the keyword, so you should have a main keyword, and then you, you have other keywords that complement that throughout the content. And those are in, it's called headings and H1 tags, H2 tags. And it's almost like if you remember a table of contents and then there's a chapter, right. and another chapter, another chapter. It's just like that. Um, so they look at that, but they're looking at social triggers. They're looking at how fast it loads on mobile, how fast it loads on desktop. They're looking at whether or not you always see the little toolbars that say share on Facebook, share on Twitter. Those help you because it shows Google that you've actually shared it. If you have images, you need to have an alt tag and that's actually your keyword because Google can't read images. They're working on it because that's why they have Google Photos. They're mm -hmm. recognizing faces, they're recognizing sunsets. So at some point they will be able to read images, but right now they can't. So whatever you put in your image should be your keyword, not your name, not the name of you. If you wanna rank on your show, then you put your show name in the alt tag and you're telling Google what that image is. Same with video, they can't recognize what somebody is saying in a video, so it's important to transcribe you know, a lot of the main talking points inside of a video. So YouTube can recognize voice oh, can. videos okay. now. So they're getting, so YouTube, you can do SEO too. If you say a title on YouTube because you're trying to rank for that term, but you don't speak those words in that video, you get dinged. So YouTube absolutely can recognize your words that. now. So pay attention to what I'm typing. In. I'm usually pretty honest though and stuff, but still that's something to be mindful of that. So a lot of people, we have a client that's an attorney and they'll say, do I have to show up for court if I have a DUI? And he goes straight into answering the question. Yes, you have to show up for court, but he doesn't have that question in there. Mm -hmm. So because of it, nobody would find his videos. Nobody would find his videos. As soon as we changed the title, and YouTube said, oh, you did talk about this. Okay, mm -hmm. great. This is, this is what you said it was. Then it starts to be found in search engines. Well, wow. a lot of good information here with Bethany Nonami. So definitely you'll reach out to her at marleynonami.com. Take advantage of the free growth assessment. Definitely uh, knows her stuff with uh, SEO and uh, website design. So I got a lot of good tips and learned some stuff today I did not even know. So <laughs> Bethany, thank you so much thank for being you. with Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank and you. And again, marleynonami.com for more information. Find new episodes each weekday morning, 9 a.m. on thatbusinessnetwork.com. And please subscribe to us on iTunes and also on our YouTube channel at thatyoutubechannel.com. You've been listening to That Business Show 2.0 with your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business.